G'day guys and welcome to me lab. This is our fourth video in our Wolfenstein 3D Godot 4 tutorial series, also known as Bogenstein 3D. Um, and what we should be doing in this lesson is we're gonna create a heads up display, um, including our uh, weapon animations. I'm doing this, particularly our knife. This is how you fight with one apparently. Um, we're gonna do all that today. So let's go and have a look at what that'll look like and then we'll get into our WWSS. So when we finish uh, today, you should have something like this, where we've actually built our heads up display. I mean, at the moment, we've just got a blue bar and our knife that we can stab with, but that's the guts of it that we need to sort of move on from there. So we'll be adding lots of things as we continue, different weapons and uh, readouts on that HUD. But for today, we should finish up with something that looks a little bit like this. All right, jump on in, let's make this happen. So we wanna start off by editing our player script, okay? So the reason is I wanna use the space bar for our fire button, um, and that's already in our, uh, in our standard Node 3D character body stuff that we use to create our player. That has some built-in script that handles jumps, and we don't wanna have it mapped to that jump button. So there's just, there's two lines of code that occur just here at, I think, 17 and 18. I accidentally already deleted it, but um, we just wanna delete those, and they just handle the jump. So it's basically, if UI accept is pressed uh, and is on floor, then jump. It's two lines from just here uh, in our fixes process. Just, just delete those out, so that way you don't have the space bar mapped to both jumping and shooting. Um, or if you like that, do it. Um, now, we need to create a new scene to make this happen. So click on our plus, we're gonna make a new scene, we're gonna go other node, and then we're going to look for a canvas layer, because that's what we're gonna use to build this out. We're gonna use a canvas layer. So we've got that canvas layer there, click on it and rename it to UI, just like that. So now we have a canvas layer as our root node and it's called UI. Let's save our scene now, just to make sure we're in the habit of it. So we've got a UI.tscn now. Um, and let's add to that. So click on the plus over here in our nodes. We're gonna add to that an animated sprite 2D. So I know we're making a 3D game, but our head up display is really only two dimensional. So we're gonna add an animated sprite 2D to our heads up display that is gonna be our weapon space. Um, and we'll also, pardon me, we'll also be wanting a color rect. So we can click on our plus again, and search for color rect. And our color rect is gonna be that blue bar that goes across the bottom that we can put our um, ammo and all that stuff in front of. So let's have a look at our 2D view now because we've done a few things and it's all gonna be a bit messy. All right, so up in this corner here, we've got our um, color rect. I'm just gonna move it down there. Let's go to our uh, layout. So we wanna find, uh, see where we've got anchor points. So over in our inspector, you go to layout, come down to where we see anchors click on that. Instead of top left, I want this to be um, center bottom like that. And then up the top of it where it's got color, I want to change our color to be sort of a dark blue like you find in Wolfenstein. There we go, something like that. And then I'm just going to resize this a bit to be vaguely what I think it needs to be. Like that, there's our color rect. All right, we can leave that bit as it is. Let's work on our animated sprite now. So as you probably know, to use an animated sprite 2D, we're gonna need some sprites. I have in uh, your OneNote or your Itch or whichever, um, wolfweapons.png. That's what we're gonna be using for our uh, animated sprite for our weapons. So wolf weapons, get that one imported into your library, just drag it and drop it. And then we can set up our animation. So with our animated sprite 2D selected over here, Head over to your inspector window, go to where it says animation, expand that out, and then next to where we see sprite frames, and then it's empty, click on the empty, go down to where it says new sprite frames, click on that, and then just as a quick shortcut to get it to appear down the bottom, click on that again, and then it appears at the base there, right? So you can see now down here, we've got animations, animation frames, sprite frames is the, the tab we're in. So we've got one here already called default. Uh, let's rename that. So just click on it and let's rename it to knife idle. 
yeah knife idle all right so our knife idle it doesn't need to um, loop because it's just going to be a stationary one is going to be what we have as sort of our standard so I'm going to click on this little a which is our like autoplay so we just want that to be whatever we start on and to add our actual sprite to it we're going to click on this little grid go to our wolf weapons and then we've got horizontal and vertical at four and four but our horizontal is actually five so we want to increase that by one and then we just want to grab this one frame to be our idle like that now let's just position that roughly where we want it which should be basically middle bottom but it's a bit small in the grand scheme of things right so let's also come over here to our transform and where we've got our scale let's make it um five and five something like that let's position that now make sure it's pretty much in the middle all right i'm happy with that now we need to make another animation so come back down to our animations tab click on the white document with the green plus and then click on new animation to rename it and this one we're going to call stab which i think is quite self-explanatory so we don't want it to loop if we leave looping on it'll mean it'll just constantly do that the first time you hit the stab button it'll just stab forever more until a different animation is called so we don't want that we don't want autoplay but we want this to be relatively fast, like, I don't know, 16 frames a second or something, because it's going to be four frames, so that means we can play it three times. Um, all right, so click on our grid now, click on Wolf Weapons, make it five, and then we just want to grab these four other ones, right? So we, this is our idle, these are our stab. So add that. Excellent, da, 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 da. excellent, six. Yep, it's not on loop. All right, that's really good, save that. All right, so we've added our knife, we've added our color rect. Now we've got to set up the, the code to make all this work. So save what you've done, click on your UI root node, and then click on the green document with the, or the white document with the green plus like that. That'll bring up our uh, attach a node script. Yes, we want to attach a script to the UI node. So click create, and then it gives us our standard, uh, standard information. So let's grab some code, copy it in, and then we can talk about it. Okay, so we want to, paste in our new code so let's talk through what this is i'll uh, make sure we've got it up on the screen for long enough but also of course this will be available if you need it um all right so we're going to extend our canvas layer that should make sense to all of us i hope because uh that's what our root node is so we're extending that root node we're creating two new variables so variable one we're going to call ammo and that's going to be zero to start with and variable two is about uh, what our current weapon is so when we first start the game we're going to start with a knife and no bullets makes sense castle wolfenstein i'm pretty sure is about escaping from a nazi prison or whatever so it makes sense that we start out with very little um, so var ammo equals zero var current weapon is knife and then we've got this function ready so in our ready function which runs when we first load this particular script um, we want to be able to find out when our animations finish playing so this bit here with the dollar sign animated sprite 2d all that is is just a shortcut so if i was to grab our animated sprite 2d over here and just drag it over it does that exact thing, okay? So when you see this, this green animated sprite 2D or whatever it might be, all it's saying is that's the path for this particular node in our scene. Um, so we want to access this node and we want to know when it finishes its animation and then we want to let that um, information um, go through to this function that we're going to make called on animated sprite 2D animation finished. I should have shortened that. Um, so we're gonna, we want the information about when our sprite animation finishes to end up finding its way here so that we can continue with our logic. Now that's our ready, so what's our process function? I've said it before, ready is like our uh, void setup in Arduino and process is like our void loop kind of thing. So um, think of it in those terms, this is done once, this is done all the time. So all the time we're looking to see if someone hits the space bar, UI select, um, and if they do that when their current weapon is knife, then we want to play the animation called stab that we just made. If, however, um, their current weapon is a gun and they have more than zero ammo, so at least one bullet, then we'll play the shoot animation and take one ammo away. Now we haven't set up the guns or the shooting or any of that yet. We're going to do that later, but we're just including that logic now because um, I don't want, I don't like sort of going back and deleting and redoing too often. So we've got that logic in there now. You should be able to read it, and make sense of it. Um, now we just go down to our last little function, which is all about handling the end of those animations. So we just want to know when the animation finishes, if our current weapon is knife, revert to knife idle. If our current weapon is gun, revert to gun idle. So that's what we're doing there. So um, hopefully you've got a good look at what you need there. 
um, it's only you know it's not very many lines of code at all actually is it so um, once you've got that done and saved our next step is going to be to get this whole thing into our player scene which is super duper easy and you probably remember how to do this but let's open up our player scene as well just so we know what we're playing with all right so our player scenes open hopefully you've you've remembered to edit your code there what we want to do is just make sure that our UI gets dragged in somehow I've already done that or something let me just fix this up let yeah go away it was never there I, I promise all right so this is our player scene as it should stand we've just made our UI so now what we can do is find our UI.tscn and just drag it in and drop it on our player node and then it puts it in the scene for us so save that fingers crossed let's test this and hopefully it all works play all right well it looks good so far my WASD still works um, oh, there's a tiny gap between the knife and the HUD, so I'll need to fix that, but moment of truth, spacebar. Yes! Yep, and it has to finish its animation before the next one plays. So that's it. That's exactly what we were attempting to achieve. We have achieved it fantastically. So let's go and look at our must may might so you don't forget anything and make sure that yours looks like this. And I will just say before we do that, that I know my floor is different. My file got corrupted <laughs> and I think I couldn't find the same sprite I or I was too lazy to find the same sprite I'd use. I don't mind this one. It doesn't look quite as nice though. But uh, yeah, anyways, um, mine might look a little bit different to what it did last lesson. Don't stress about that. It's effectively still the same. I just had to rebuild it because I corrupted it. Um, yeah, so let's look at our must may might so you don't forget any of the steps. All right, what you must get done to keep up with this lesson is you've got to create that HUD scene and script and also import your sprites. And also don't forget to remove the jump logic from the player script. Otherwise, every time you go to attack, you'll also jump in the air. Now, what you may like to do is keep expanding, right? A good practice would be just to try and add a room every time we do a lesson, right? So that way, by the end, you'd have like 12 rooms that you've built. That would be really good practice to reinforce some of those learnings. Um, and what you might like to do is start thinking about how are we going to kill a 3D enemy with a 2D scene? How are we going to do that? Start thinking you might get a head start on everyone else. Well, if you've got all of those tasks done, you should now have a castle that's starting to grow in size and a player that can wander around exploring it, stabbing the air to their heart's content. Next time, we're going to continue building out our combat system. And our quote of the week comes from one of my most favouritest Americans. It is Mark Twain, and he once said, Kindness is the language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me on this one, and I'll catch you in the next video.